Hello, welcome to a new video. Today I am bringing you my August reading wrap up and it was another really, really good month and I'm really, really happy with how serious tbr -a went. So, I read a total of 27 books. I read 9,219 pages um, and 73 and a half hours of that were audiobooks. I had zero two stars, one three star, six four stars and 20 five stars. Unfortunately, I did have two DNFs, so I will very quickly talk about them first. So first up was City of Last Chances by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Um, I DNF this very early on. I, just, I said on my vlog, I feel too dumb for this book. This is not a book for me. And it felt like there was just too much and not enough. And I just, I was so confused and I wasn't gripped. So I just gave up. Um, and then the second one was The Sun and the Void by Gabriella Romero La Cruz. Um, I got like 130 pages into this chunk. And who knows? Who knows what was happening? I couldn't tell you any of the characters, nothing. So yeah, but let's go on to the good stuff. So the first book I read was Defend the Dawn by Bridget Kemmerer. This is the second book in the Defy the Night trilogy and this was five star. I'm not shocked. I really enjoyed this. It suffered a little bit from middle book syndrome, but not enough to diminish my love for the series as a whole. And it has really set up book three so I'm really excited to read book three in September but continue the series <laughs> next was Diet Volume 3 by Kieran Gillen this was a four star this was really good I definitely need to get my hands on volume four soon because I would like to see how this all wraps up and how it ends but honestly the artwork in this is absolutely stunning I can't show you any because it's probably going to be spoilery um yeah, it's gonna be spoilery but it's absolutely stunning and i love it next i finished your duology with the monarchs by cass morgan and danielle page i five starred the ravens when i read it either last year or the year before and i've been putting this off because i was so scared that i just it wasn't gonna live up to the first book but can confirm this was a five star <laughs> and i loved it probably more than the first book i don't know no, actually, I think I prefer the first book, but this was still absolutely incredible. And I really liked how everything wrapped up and how it was all handled. And yeah, next up was the Doctor Who 12 Doctors, 12 Stories, which is by 12 different authors. Each author had their own doctor to write a short story. And this was a full start. This was really fun to read. I really enjoyed um, all of them, but I think especially, I think it was, was it the seventh Doctor? The Seventh Doctor was my favourite one, which was by Mallory Blackman. But narrator-wise, the Eighth Doctor was the best one. Although the story for the Eighth Doctor was really interesting. But it was just really fun to see, especially the classic Who Doctors, because I'm someone who grew up with classic Who. So when Doctor Who was revived with Eccleston, it wasn't a new thing for me. I already knew. My dad is like Doctor Who crazy. So Doctor Who was not a new thing for me. But obviously we don't see much of the older Doctors, so it was really fun because each of these was literally just an episode of Doctor Who and it was amazing. Next up was Angel Volume 2, which was City of Demons. So I believe this was the last one before the Angel ones are changed to Angel and Spike. I can, I, I can see why, um, based on this, why it's changing to Angel and Spike. But this was a five star. I really, really enjoyed this. And I'm really excited to continue. Um, my next one to read... I can't remember if my next one to read is Hellmouth or Willow, but I've got them in the order I need to read them. But I need to double check where this one slots back in so I can see what one's next. But I absolutely love this. The artwork can sometimes be a bit dodgy, but it's fine. But we got to meet Gun and Fred in this, and I love them. Next was The Warm Hands of Ghost by Catherine Arden, and this was a five star. I am actually... I don't know whether I'm shocked that this was a five star or not. I genuinely didn't think it would be because I'm not a historical fiction fan. However, however, I love 
the Wind Knight trilogy by Catherine Arden, because even though it's historical fiction, there is just something about how Catherine Arden writes that just draws me in and has me needing more. I will say I'm glad this is a standalone and not a series. I think it works really well as a standalone, but it was just so beautifully written and I just was rooting for all the characters and I just, oh, I just loved it. Next was Blood of Dragons by Robin Hobb. This was a four star. This has been a really good end to this series. I'm really glad we finally read the Rainwild Chronicles because obviously we read the first one like last year or the year before and then haven't read any more of the Rainwild Chronicles until like a few months back because it just, the first one was not good. And it, I know it's not based on the story. It's based on where they decided to cut book one and two because it makes no sense. So I didn't enjoy the first one. And I wasn't too keen on the second one. But then the third and fourth have been solid four stars. And I have really enjoyed reading them. Um, unfortunately, this does mean we have to go back to the Fitz side of the Elderlings. And I don't want that. But we're so close to the end. We've got one trilogy and then we're done. So I've come this far. I'm not giving up now. But Blood of Dragons was really good. I really liked how certain things were handled. I thought certain things were done perfectly some people got absolutely the day they deserved and it was really vindicating <laughs> um but yeah next up was the inheritance games by jennifer lynn Burn barnes and friends i this is probably my biggest surprise because i genuinely did not expect to love this as much as i did I thought I would like it, but I didn't think I would become obsessed with it to the point that I am reading the second book in September. Like, I don't do that often. I don't, like, dive straight into the next book as soon as I can. But this has made me need to. So this was definitely a win, and I'm really, really happy. Um, it definitely had Knives Out feels. It was not the same story. There were similarities in the story. But it was not the same story but but it had the vibes and that was what drew me into this book <laughs> so it didn't disappoint okay next up we're going to talk about seven books in one go so it's the final seven volumes of attack on titan i am putting the picture for season two of the anime because it's not spoilery unlike the book covers um so i planned on reading three volumes but then the issue with that was i only had four left and i couldn't leave it where it was so i finished i finished attack on titan all of these were five star i actually in one of these i full-on sobbed because there was this moment and it was heartbreaking and i wasn't expecting it and then there was another thing that was heartbreaking and then those heartbreaking things kept getting brought up and I was like <laughs> just crying in messages to Jem which she appreciated <laughs> next up we have Barbarians Taming by Ruby Dixon this is the eighth book I think it's the eighth book in the series um this was a five star I have so much fun reading these because they're just wild and they're fun and are they the best written books ever? Absolutely not. But do I care? No. My enjoyment is like through the roof for these books that I can look past the... Do you know what? I can't even say lack of plot anymore. Because this used to just be Blue Alien Smart. But now it's Blue Alien Smart with a plot. There's actually a plot. And there was a moment in this where I was like, oh my god, what's happening? Oh no, oh no. <laughs> And I'm so here for it. Um, I'm really excited for the next book. I need the next book, but it's not out yet. And I know I can read it on Everand because they have it. I have all the books. But I've been really good at reading them as the physical ones come out. But I don't want to wait. <laughs> Just see my pain. My pain. Next up is Spy Family Volume 3. I had the best time with this. This was a five star, obviously. Are we shocked? No. Um, I absolutely love this story i can't say anything about it because spoilers but book four or volume four has this dog 
and I've been waiting and this has a hint of the dog so I'm very excited for the next volume because I need the dog. Next up is Cardcaptor Sakura Volume 5. This was a four star. These have all been solid four stars. I will say I do find it a little bit easier to read this having grown up with the um, watching the anime as a kid. I think I would struggle with this a lot more if I didn't have the background of those characters from the series. Um, but thankfully, I did watch it and I loved it. That movie I had on video and I don't know how that video still worked because I watched it that much along with the Digimon movie. Um, but I wanted to be Sakura. <laughs> kind of still do because she's cool. But yeah, I just, I'm having so much fun reading these but the issue is I only have one more volume and then I've got to buy the other four volumes. And these are expensive so probably not going to happen soon. Next up was a book that I started mid-month but was a buddy read so I didn't finish till the end of the month and that is Born of Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armantrout. This is the final book in the Fire and Flesh series or Flesh and Fire whatever it's called. I don't care at this point this was the three star. This is definitely going on my most disappointing reads of the year because I was just it sucked. It was not the worst book I've ever read but if I was not so close to the end of this world, I would have DNF'd this. We have one more book in the main series to come out. And if it weren't for that, I would DNF the series, but I'm so close to the end. But if they, if she dare decides to do any spin-off series, any more spin-off series that is, for this world, I don't think I'll bother. I'm gonna read the final book in the Blood and Ash series and then I think I'm done with Jennifer L. Armantrout because this was just disappointment. There was far too much smart and I said this in my vlog, I understand it's a fantasy romance, there's going to be a lot of smart. However, it just felt like this was every five minutes and that's fine if I'm reading a book for smart, like the Ice Planet Barbarian series. But when I started the Blood and Ash series, I was mainly reading for the fantasy plot the romance was just a bonus but it feels like she's really jumped on the bandwagon with like oh fantasy romance thing and just leaned more into the romance side but in a smutty way and I'm like sometimes less is more just saying okay next up I read Queen Bee by Juno Dawson this was a four star four star um I really enjoyed this however it doesn't really bring anything to the world as a whole so that's why it's a four star but I did really enjoy seeing the Tudor times because if you don't know me, I love Six the Musical, which is based off the Six Wives of Henry VIII. And this is about Anne Boleyn. Next up, I went off TBR for this, but in my defense, it was because my audiobook hold that I was supposed to get in September came in early and I wasn't missing out on it. So um, I read In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune and I five starred it and I am obsessed. <laughs> And I'm so, so excited that I got to read this because I wasn't expecting to love this. And I'm so glad that I got to hear TJ Klune say the words, it's a Pinocchio retelling, but with robots instead of puppets, because that is what brought me, because I genuinely did not want to read this because I don't do puppets or dolls. So when I heard it's a Pinocchio retelling, I was like, oh, let's not do that. But then when he said it's Pinocchio retelling, but it's robots, I was like, you got me there, sir. You got me. Um, so yeah, five stars. I absolutely love them. There are some robots in this that are my favourite characters in a long time. I just loved them so much. But also the cute little romance side story was also very cute. And I'm just... But this book is about family and it's wholesome and I love it. <laughs> Next up we have Sea Glass by Maria V. Snyder. This was a five star. Um, I really enjoyed this. However, it was not better than the first book in the series. Just because it suffered from middle book syndrome. Having said that, like with Defend the Dawn, it's really set up for the third book. So, it's not a bad book. And I still had fun with it. It was still a great book. Just not the best. Next up was my reread of A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Mass. I tabbed. This is obviously for Massalong. Um, I tabbed. 
I cried. I realised just how much I will defend Nesta to my dying breath. So yeah. Next up was The Extinction Trials Exile by S.M. Wilson. This is the second book in the Extinction Trials series and I am fully back into this world. I am going to finish this series this year. Not just yet, I have plans. The plans will become apparent in the next couple of months, but book three is getting read this year and I'm so excited. I thought I'd struggle with this because I didn't have an audiobook for it, but I powered through in two evenings. <laughs> two evenings it took me to read this so I think I'm okay but this just this is like Hunger Games meets Jurassic Park and I just am absolutely obsessed with it. Next up was Role Playing by Kathy Yardley. This was a five star. It only just scraped a five star. I really enjoyed the um the fact that this is like I said this in my vlog I keep repeating what I've said in my vlog so if you watch my vlog I apologize this is repeating myself I really like how this is an older couple because usually in contemporary romance the oldest you're gonna get is like 35 and she's 48 and he's 50 so it's really refreshing to see an older couple in contemporary romance but they are adorable I love them them just growing as friends and then more was just perfect and the conflict was done the way I like a conflict in a romance book to be done so that was a win for me as well. Next up I read Secrets of Blackthorn Hall by Cassandra Clare. This was a five star, this was a perfect tens across the board on Core Pile five star. I can't find any fault in this which I've never said that about a Cassandra Clare book before. A Cassandra Clare book has never got all five, all tens on Corpile. But this was everything I wanted. Everything. And it's made me even more excited for the first Wicked Powers books to come out. Because I just... It was so much fun to have a new Shadowhunters book. That's all I'm saying. And then the final book I read in the month of August was Iris Kelly Doesn't Date by Ashley Heron Blake. This was a four star, um, technically a four and a half. Um, I really enjoyed this. I was a little bit annoyed about how part of the conflict was done. I think it could have been handled a little bit better, like written a little bit better. Um, but it wasn't the worst third act breakup I've ever read in a contemporary romance. However, I raged because not only has Ashley Heron Blake not done her research, but the editor has like missed completely a very simple Google search. Because if someone has a Cockney accent, they cannot then be said to be from Liverpool. It's a basic Google search to know that a Cockney accent means you're from East London. And it angered me so much it actually affected my enjoyment of the book so yeah but character wise i loved the characters <laughs> they were great um but yeah <laughs> but that was my august wrap up my favorite book <laughs> now my favorite book is secrets of blackthorn hall obviously all tens across the board um however i feel like an honorable mention is gonna need to be there for the inheritance games because like this blew my mind and i loved it so much um so yeah let me know in the comments below what your favorite book you read in august was but i hope you've enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button hit the subscribe button and i'll see you next time bye